Okay, so we are going to now introduce, and I'd like you to give a warm welcome to the founder of Root to Tip, natural hair expert, Sal Baxter. Big round of applause, please. So we're going to be starting off with a question and answer. So if you've got any questions that you are dying to know the answer to regarding natural hair and skincare, breakage, scalp challenges, she's got a range of products for adults and children. She runs children's workshops and hair care workshops as well. She's been in the industry for a while. I believe you're even award winning, aren't you? Award winning, an award winning sister. A round of applause just for that. Thank you. So any questions that you've got on hair challenges, natural hair challenges, you can ask them now and I'll, I'll run the mic up to you. Any questions? Actually, let me let Sal introduce herself a bit more while you think of some more questions. Hi guys, thank you for the warm welcome. My name is Sal, I'm the founder as leader of the Root to Tip Natural Hair Care Products. And I'm really, really hair obsessed really. Um, any questions? First of all, yeah, at the back. Did everyone hear that? No. The sister said that she went to the doctors and they said that centrifugal alopecia is something that mainly affects black and Asian people, but they don't know how to, they don't know what to do with it. Yeah, I've come across it before and it is, it's, it's more attributed towards black women because of our styling choices and basically, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Hello? One, two. Better? Hello, better? Okay, cool. Central food control al so alopecia is kind of like one, one. Um, it's kind of attributed to our hair styling choices. It was really caused by relaxers and also by hot combs back in the day. So it is really attributed only to black women. Have you got it yourself, the lady you asked? Okay, okay. Anyone else suffered with alopecia before? Before I go into my story and tell you how I actually kickstarted the whole root to tip thing. Yeah. Well, I'll go into my story. We can start now, actually. Do I start? Start now, actually. I think we're. Ready now. Okay. So, this is Root to Tip. It's my brand, Root to Tip. And I basically started making products around nine years ago now when I suffered with a scalp condition called Seabrite Dermatitis, which is basically um, a cradle cap, but for adults. Anybody here had a baby before? And when a child gets cradle cap, that scaly thick thing on the scalp, I had that and it caused hair loss, alopecia. So I went to my doctors trying to find a solution and couldn't find anything at all to really help me. In fact, he gave me some solutions, but they just dried my hair out even more. So anybody here had a really bad scalp condition before and hadn't had no solution for it? Just raise your hand. Yeah, it's quite common in the black community. But for me, I wanted to really try and find a solution to my problem. I've always had naturally thick hair. I've always been natural, but I just wanted to find something to cure my condition, but it had to be natural for me. So I started to research. I started to research into natural extracts, natural oils, natural ways to really stimulate hair growth in black people, just in general. And I came across um, loads of articles on essential oils and loads of articles on um, Ayurvedic extracts. So I created my first product called the Root Energizer after about a good 24 months of research. And I started using it on myself. My hair grew back like within 12 months, my hair was really, really thick. It grew to waist length. And then I, I began to get requests about it as well from others in the community. And that's where the whole idea for the business really came from. So anybody else who's suffering with hair loss and hasn't got a solution for it at the moment? Yeah. And what do you guys normally do? You go to your doctor. And what are you normally told by your doctor? So you've got traction alopecia. If it's been done over time, for example, I mean, I see loads of women. Right, so it's, it's still traction alopecia. That's called, um, if your hair's been pulled up by the roots, by styling, or even someone else, it's still traction alopecia. 
and basically the follicles have been scarred and damaged. It can grow back if you catch it in time, but if the follicles are damaged, you can have scar tissue there and it won't grow back. Have you tried anything yet to grow it back yet? What did you ask? I didn't hear what you said in the first place. What did you? Basically, you should try and use a natural growth oil, but if you've been trying for 13 years, what have you done so far? But how's your hair normally styled day to day? Okay. When it first happened to you, did you have any kind of, did you leave your hair alone for a period of time? Did you leave it loose? I mean, was you braiding it again? Sorry? Okay. So, what's, so, what's, so what, what may have happened to you then is it's been scarred now, so you can't get that hair growth over time. I mean, you can try and use one of our oils we have, but if you ever have traction alopecia, the first time you actually, actually notice it, you stop wearing your hair in a tight style straight away. That way it gives your hair a chance to, uh, to heal itself, for you to massage and nourish the scalp, and it gives it a chance to regrow. But if you keep on doing the hair in a tight style every time, it's not going to grow back. It's like, it's like having, having a garden full of plants and pulling them out the roots and trying to get them to grow again. It's the same thing with your scalp. But um, I'll start with this anyway. So my story is I said I had a scalp condition called seabird dermatitis, created my first scalp oil, and realized there was loads of black women in the community who had the same condition as mine, but there's no real solutions for us. Everyone here uses hair grease, or anyone use hair grease at the moment? Just a show of hands. Actually, stand up if you use hair grease. Just stand up for me so I can see. If you're, st if you're still using hair grease. Okay. Hair grease is basically... Your blue magic, your um, ultra sheen, your dax. That's what I mean by hair grease. Anything that's petroleum based or minerals hair grease. Anybody here who's not used natural oil on the scalp? Just hair grease. Just a show of hands then. There's quite a few of you. A few of us. So we stopped using hair grease, guys. Okay, brilliant. That's fantastic. Because hair grease is basically Vaseline with a fragrance and a color in it. We've been sold that for years and years and years. You go into any Indian shop on the, on the high street, what do you find? Rows and rows of hair grease, petroleum. And it basically blocks the pores in the scalp. And if you're not washing your hair frequently, it causes, um, it retards your hair growth. It can also cause dry scalp conditions. So forget about the hair grease and try and stick to natural oils. That's really, really important. Um, um, anyone heard about EDCs? Endocrine disruptor chemicals. The chemicals found in 80% in, in of black products mark, or, or made for black women and mixed race women. You have, yeah? Well, I did a short film about EDCs, and I'll let you guys watch it quickly. We'll talk about it afterwards. Can you press play on that? EDCs are basically... The endocrine disruptor chemicals, they're basically um, synthetic ingredients that are placed into, into, into products. You might find ORS products or in your, in your olive oil sheen products. And they basically like to make the product feel nice, but they're all chemical based. And they disrupt the hormone levels in your body, leading to fibroids, leading to cancer, leading to infertility, leading to the early onset of puberty in girls as young as three and four. But um, I'll explain it better in here. If you hit it again, hold on. One second. No, from YouTube. Slight technical error, but we're going to bring it up in a minute. But in the video, I'm basically talking about EDCs, where you find them, and the fact that most products probably use it actually contain them. Anyone here who uses ORS? ORS products. Are we all using natural brands? ORS, okay. Anyone here who used to use ORS before back in the day? Because that was a product I used to use way back when I was a teenager. I used to use ORS. Um, or Hask Placenta. Anyone use Hask, H A S K? Yeah? No? Okay. Well, I'll explain a bit more about it in the, in the video here. 
And you can ask me questions afterwards. Children, um, infertility, and boys, they too should be avoided. 
What if you can't find these ingredients on your label? Because sometimes FDA has actually ruled that phthalates and parabens are not harmful substances. So that means that if you're buying any product from the US, these things are not even going to be on your ingredients label. So that means you're putting yourself at risk for the sake of hair. As a natural hair care manufacturer, I think I have a social responsibility to ensure that any product I produce for my consumers and place them into the retail market is clean, ethically sourced, and not going to cause any, any long-term health or disruption in the body of anybody who uses it. I can speak for myself, but I can't speak for other brands. I've got some, I've got some part in the video and speaking about the shame of the children. Yeah, Get to that part, you've got some much later if you want to inform detail. What did, what did you think so far? Did you, were you aware of this information? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to skip to the shop part, there's quite a long video, and um, show you what I've found on the shelves.
Thanks, guys. I'm going to leave it there because time's running away. But I'm trying to give you guys a flavour of what you can expect in your 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 hair shops on the high street. Most of the products you're going to find on the shelves contain NEDCs. So you may not be using them now, but you may have used them for years ago before. Anybody here got fibroids? Stuff with quite, it's quite a common thing in the black community, and a lot of women are unaware. I'm not saying it's only because of the hair products, but fibroids. Hold the mic up. No. Can you hear me? Hello. The better. Mike. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I've got a shout. Is there volume on this? Mike. Better? Okay. So what I'm basically trying to say is these are some of the brands you should be looking out for that contain EDCs. Anybody here using any of these brands? Which ones? Cantu. Cantu is, is not it's more it's more it's I think they contain more alcohol. They recently um did a massive um rebrand of their products and changed a lot of their, for their formulations, but it's not a black owned brand. Did you know that? Right, it's, it's owned by, it's, owned by it's, it's, it's a white owned brand. It's owned by many hedge fund companies. And what they tend to do is they manufacture in a mass way. It's a corporate company. They manufacture in a mass way because they understand and know that we spend, we spend at least 10 times more per year than our white counterparts on the hair products. So the black hair industry is a billion dollar industry billion pound industry, multi-billion pound industry. So if, if they, if they, if they, if they, they kind of market towards our insecurities. So we have dry hair, we're trying to grow our hair. I mean, I saw a product called Baby Don't Bald, which is crazy, right? I mean, because all babies are going to have a bald spot at some point, it's going to grow back naturally, but because we know that our ch children are going to have a bald patch on the back, they actually had a product called Baby Don't Bald in the shop. On the back of the ingredients was, uh, was animal placenta hormones. So you buy it for your child, who's a baby, use it for a month or two, use it for a year, then she starts developing breasts when she's three years old, hitting puberty. So that's how serious it actually is. You really have to be careful, guys, and understand. And try and do your homework and see who's making the products. What are they really, um, what's their real aim? Of course we need to have, because our product, because our hair is quite unique. It needs to be moisturized every single day, and many communities are profiting from the black hair care market, but not many black people are, unfortunately because we tend to stick to these, these corporate brands. But ORS has been around for years. Is it a black-owned brand? It used to be a black-owned brand years ago. It's now owned by Asians. Um, and Hasper Center is also not a black-owned brand, but the Hasper Center, anybody use the Hasp before? Percenta products, Hasper Center. Anybody? H-A-S-K? No one? Okay. Well, that one's very popular in the local Indian shops. And that one contains animal placenta. So again, it's disrupting the hormones in your body. You don't need to have any kind of animal hormone into your body. Because anything you put into your scalp, it goes straight into your bloodstream, and it starts to affect the way your body um, behaves and reacts. Again, it's all about EDCs. So what I'm trying to say and round up by saying is, basically, you have to really be, really be careful about what you're putting into your system. Because um, even, even, even down to relaxers, anyone here who still relaxes their hair? No? It's not, it's not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to name and shame no one. <laughs> it's okay, it's fine. <laughs> it's not a bad thing at all. It's not a bad thing at all, but. It's fine. As some, so, so who used to relax right. their hair back in the day? A show of hands, who used to relax their hair? Let's be more fair. Right. So more than half of us used to relax our hair back in the day. Okay, if we can keep it down, please, family. And ladies, and how often would you relax your hair? How often would you get a touch-up? Six weeks is like the minimum, right? Now, your hair only grows a quarter to half an inch a month. Did you know that? So what are you touching up in that, in that six weeks? Would you often get a burn and an overlap? Was your hair healthy, in good condition? Right. So it's, 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 it's thinking about the relaxing... The relaxing of the, the relaxer chemical contains lye. I guess you guys know that now because you stop relaxing now. Basically, it's the same ingredient in your, in your Mr. Muscle drain cleaner, sodium hydroxide lye. So I don't know if you guys heard about the report of the lady who, um, in the uh, mortuary report, the lady who used to relax her hair for years. And when they opened up her skull, they found all the decay and, and the, you know, the mold underneath where she'd been relaxing for years. So it's quite a caustic, caustic, and toxic chemical. But we, it's sold to children. They have relaxers in boxes for little girls. You know, I've approached mums in the, in the shops and said to her, please stop relaxing your child's hair. Try this, try this. 
but it's only sold to us in the black community because, because we're so ready to try and buy anything that's marketed prettily towards us. So we've got to start thinking about what we put on our hair, and especially the children, because they haven't got no choice. We're buying it for them to make them feel good about themselves, but in the, in the long run, their hair's being damaged, their internal organs are being damaged, so we've got to start thinking about that. Um, but try to avoid these brands if you can. Um, there's loads of other brands out there. There's Roots of Tip, there's Afrocentric, there's loads of other natural hair care brands who are coming out into the market. Even outside there, you have the other girl, I've forgotten her name, brand of her, but she's, she's out there, she's selling her cur um, Curly by Nature's out there as well. So try and invest in black brands. The reason why I created products in the first place, because I really had a passion for hair education, and that came before I started making products even. So I've been doing workshops since like 2008, and my thing was, I was told was, you have to help them love their hair. If you love your hair naturally, especially as a young child, and grow with that, that self-confidence, it just gives you a, a boost that's priceless. If you have to always be hiding underneath a wig or a weave, I'm not anti any of those things, but your hair should come first. And women are changing now. Are you guys feeling more informed and empowered about your hair at the moment? What's changed for you guys, anybody? What's changed? What's the biggest change? What's more in the market in terms of products or information? Both, Both okay. Self-love, better products as well, okay. More positive roles. Instagram, YouTube, work, things like this as well, I suppose, as well. And the interest, and just having an interest in our natural hair, because our natural hair is beautiful. It's the, it's the most unique texture out there, but a few facts about black hair. I'm going to spell a few myths for you. Black hair, hair care myths, for example. Is our hair the strongest or the weakest out of all the races? Which one? Strongest or weakest? <laughs> How's that you think is the strongest? The most fragile then? Yeah. It's the most fragile. I wouldn't say weakest. It's the most fragile in, in out of all the races. However, it's, it, is, it has got a lot of strength. But it's the most fragile just because of the way it, it cores and, and it grows in a, in a cylindrical type of shape. But it's still unique care. So when you used to get your hair relaxed before, or even if you go to the hair salon now and you get your hair blow dried, anybody? Yeah, and, do you, and or you, get your, or you get your hair brushed and combed. Who goes to the salon? Show of hands. And are you happy with, with the way your hair's handled at the moment? With the handling of your hair? Do you see any hair in a comb when it's been brushed out? Yes or no, anybody? Yeah. You're not meant to see that all the time. I once read a report in 2012 that detailed the fact that a black woman who brushes her, combs her hair on a weekly basis given herself a haircut. So you need to use your hands before you even, even try to unloose any knots in your hair. And I started teaching that years ago. So my daughter, when she was about, I think she was about almost three, I didn't use any combs in her hair anyway, really. I used to always use, I used to always use my hands to untangle her hair. And her hair was waist length. By the time she was about five, she had waist length hair, simply by not using a comb and no cane rows. Anybody here who cane rows their child's hair on a regular basis? Yeah. Nothing wrong with it, but... I say to people, try not to cane rot on a weekly basis, because for me, it kind of, um, it sometimes retards the hair growth, and our hair is quite fragile, so I prefer soft scalp hairstyles, like, for example, twists, or banding, or African threading. Anybody here do African threading? A few people. Cane rows are okay, but I think it's, it's a mindset thing where their hair always has to be neat. Now, I, I meet a lot of parents who feel their children's hair have to be groomed immaculately. Otherwise, it looks unkempt. Anybody here like that? Their child's has to be done every week. Anybody? Or every every? Uh, is it a weekly thing in anyone's house? Anyone? I would say try and extend. If you if your if your child's hair is not growing like from year to say from the start of the year to the end, you're not seeing a major change in hair growth. Try and switch up what you do. So first of all, try not to use a comb all the time. Use your hands instead. Obviously, you need a product to help you. We have a product called Honey Rain Juice. It's, our, it's one of our best-selling products. And I created that product to help parents, or just to help myself, actually, my own daughter's hair, to untangle her hair because her hair is very thick. And it helps. It's just, it's like a, it just makes the hair feel like... It just makes the hair feel like silk. It allows you to get through the knots and tangles without having to use any combs at all. If your child's crying and screaming at hair time, even yourself, you're feeling pain, try and use a detangler first and your hands. It's a game-changer. Second thing is... Um, to wash your hair, actually not washing the hair, is to um, not to blow dry very frequently. Anybody here who, who blow dries their hair every time they wash it? Just a show of hands, please. Yeah. <laughs> blow dry is not all bad, but I would say to you, if you use the blow dry with a comb attachment, do you use a heat protection every time? 
Yeah. Anybody who doesn't do that, go to the salon and they don't do that. Or do you see smoke when they're blow drying your hair? <laughs> Anybody notice that? <laughs> no, not steam, it's smoke. <laughs> the reason why you see the smoke, I say it's not steam, the reason, and it actually is, it's a combination of steam and smoke. The reason why you're seeing that smoke, because sometimes they're using a hair grease in their hair before they blow dry it, yeah. or a silicone-based um, thermal heat protection thing. And what it does, is inside each, each of your hair strands is water. And when it heats up to a certain level, obviously it's smoking the hair as well, and the products on the hair is actually making it more smoky and greasy. It's, it's like frying. But basically the... Um, the water inside the hair shaft, after you use a, a blow dryer for a long period of time, it heats up so much that it splits at the end. And it boils inside the hair shaft and splits. That's how you get split ends. So I say try to avoid blow drying, try to air dry more frequently. Again, that's a game changer if you've got natural hair and you're trying to achieve healthier, longer hair growth throughout the year. Um, any questions so far before I continue? All right, just one second, please. We're going to raise our hands here. So we've got Mike um, for the questions. So please, um, all right, let me move my back. Okay, so this is the first product I created. It's called the Root Energizer. Um, that was some of the hair growth from using for different people who've used it. That was my hair growth in the middle, but I grew to waist length for using it. But basically, I realized very early on that the scalp and the roots are very important, if not the most important thing on your whole head. And most people who I meet, they tend to pay attention to the hair. But we don't pay attention to our scalps. Anyone, anyone here really focuses on their scalp in terms of their hair care routine? A few of you do, so that's brilliant. People are getting more enlightened to that. But if you're not focusing on your scalp and you're wondering why you've got premature hair loss, your hair's not growing properly, think about the scalp first. I always say the scalp is the engine to your hair growth and to having healthy hair growth production throughout the year. So when I first started doing research into, into healthy hair growth and trying to grow black hair long, I rarely saw black women with long hair when I was growing up apart from the ones who had dreads. But, and I, I rarely saw them, but I realize now, if you have dreads, leaving the hair alone allows it to grow longer. So, so, so we can grow long hair. However, what we don't do is we don't massage our scalps. So I got a few tips from the Indian hair community. I looked into Ayurvedic hair techniques, extracts. So inside that little brown bottle over there is like four essential oils and three Ayurvedic herbal extracts. And Ayurvedic herbal extracts are amazing for hair growth. You always wonder why the Indian women have such long hair. When they were children, when I used to go to school, all my Indian friends at school had long greasy plaits all the time because their parents or their, or their auntie or grandma would sit them down every, I think every other day, every other day, and basically oil and, and, um, their hair and scalp with coconut oil. Was there a question? The stereotypical, like very dry, coarse hair, and it breaks easy, very weak around the front and the temple area. I don't know what to do with it. So I would say, um, Lady, she has. Did you hear what she said, guys? She has. She has very weak, very coarse, dry, normal kind of hair. It's quite weak in the frontal area. Yeah, the front of our hair is always the weakest part for anybody. That's why it's, it's the first thing to go. You know, having edges is like a prized possession in the black community. Edges is, is something we, we really want to keep. And the reason I say that is because our hair always has to be so, so neat. I mean, I'll come back to your question. But the loss of edges is something that starts in childhood. And I see that every single day. I see children who have their hair braided and came really, really tight in school. And you can't even put your hand on their head and go, ouch, it hurts. And they're like three years old, eight years old, ten years old. And they get used to that pain. That pain is not normal, guys. You shouldn't have any kind of pain attributed to your scalp. If your hair's being styled or your hair's put in braids or a weave, anybody, I used to get weaves in the, in the day, and in, in, in the old days, and um, it would uh, it'd be so tight on my head, I'd have to take a painkiller. Anybody else feel me on that? <laughs> but it looked good. <laughs> but I realized quite soon on that wasn't normal. You shouldn't have to take a painkiller for your hair style. That's crazy. You can't lie in a pillow at night. You're tossing and turning, trying to keep yourself, it's not normal. And that only is really in the black community. So we have to think about the way we treat our hair. Our hair is very fragile, but it's the most unique. It has the ability to grow to long lengths and be super healthy, but it's how our mindset is. And again, if you were a child who had your hair groomed every week and had, had, had all your edges in, intact and everything, it's, it's a mindset change. So when you have your own children, again, it's a mindset shift and change. If you want your child to have healthy long hair that blows in the wind, doesn't matter how, how kinky the hair is, it should have movement, blow in the wind or whatever. It doesn't matter how long it is either. If you're using the right products, it should have movement. 
That's normal for, 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 it's normal for our hair. However, you just have to think about how you're treating the hair. Treat the hair to regular water sessions. I'm going to talk about washing in a minute. Treat the hair to mas massages on a weekly basis. Anybody here who steams their hair on a weekly basis? <laughs> monthly basis? So a show, a show of hands if you, don't, if you haven't steamed this year. If I haven't steamed this year, I haven't steamed at all. It's quite a lot of you guys. Basically, by steaming, I mean underneath an actual steamer with a hot air steam penetrates through. Under, it, basically, you wash your hair, put a conditioner on or a hot oil treatment on, or hot oil, not even a hot oil treatment, hot oil on, or some olive oil or whatever, and you put a plastic cap on your head and sit underneath a steamer. Mm -hmm. Or if you go to the gym, sit in the steam room, anybody? Same thing as well. We need to steam our hair. Our hair is always inherently dry. Black hair is ultra dry. So steaming your hair, again, is a game changer if you want your hair to look more healthy, look more alive, have more volume, movement, body, less knots and tangles. You must steam your hair at least once a month. At least once a month. Question? Sal, so, greetings. Sal, so, we've got five minutes. So um, audience, okay. we're going to take three more questions. If we can answer the questions nice and quickly so we can get as many questions in before can we finish this. Can you hear this. me? Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, so, my question is basically so based on the fact that I've got locks okay. and I wondered if there's anything you can tell us about, you know, how we can look after it. Because I find that uh, my hair's thinning a lot. I don't know if it's pulling. Uh, it's not long locks. It's quite short locks. But I just wondered if there's anything that you do, that we, you know, any products even, that you could recommend for those of us with, ha with our hair in locks. Definitely. My mum has locks. She has sister locks and she had locks as a child. So I always say, and, and, and to be honest with you, when she first had her locks done, her, her loctician said to her not to wash her hair for like three months or something crazy like that. Because she, had, she was meant to let her locks, or two months, she had to let her locks set in place. Did you hear that before? When you first start locks in, you can't wash your hair. You can't put any kind of product on your hair at all. Anybody hear that? Well, I said that's nonsense. You have to treat your hair the same way you did before you locked it as it is in locks. I see a lot of women with really, really dry locks and they're not washing their hair frequently. And they're not using the oil on their scalp to massage the scalp. And even putting a, a moisturizing product on the locks itself, because it's still, it's still hair. It still needs to be looked after in the same way. So I'll say to you, we have a product called, um, again, our Root Energizer, our Grow It Long Scalp Serum, our butter, our hair butter, any of our products are suitable for locks. And mummy uses them all. She washes her hair every day. Her locks are really vibrant. They grow really well. She's almost 60. So it's not even about her age. It's about how she maintains and looks after it. So I say, look after your hair in the same way before you locked it as it is locked. That's my main advice for locks. Sal, hi, Sal, what about as part of hair care, trimming the hair? Is that something that we should be doing alongside all the other um, conditioning? And Absolutely. You trim your hair as, I think you trim your hair as and when you need and to. how often? As and when you need to. You don't have to do it every month. If your hair's feeling ratty at the end, I, I'm, I'm quite a trimmer. So I, don't, I don't mind trimming my hair at all. I like my ends to be quite blunt. If I feel like my ends of my hair are rough and dry, I've got little knots, I'll just trim it. So fit, that's why you have to get to know your hair and feel it and know when it's not looking right. If the ends of the hair, if, if, if the body of the hair is quite thick and the ends are really thin and straggly, trim it, it'll grow better. Don't be afraid to trim your hair. Even if you're trying to grow your hair out, if you trim it, it looks a lot better, it grows healthier because you're not going to get the hair that's growing at the root, breaking at the end, you're not seeing the length anyway. So trim your hair as and when you need to. But I'm going to rush through quickly towards the end. I've only got a couple of minutes left. But, um, so why hair breaks? Um, the main thing our hair breaks... The main reason why our hair breaks is basically it's ultra dry, lack of water, and using the wrong kind of moisturizing products. Um, I don't know what you guys are using, but a lot of the products that are marketed towards us contain things like mineral oil. A few of you guys are using Cantu. And I get, I get emails from customers almost on a weekly basis. I'm, I used to use Cantu, my hair's now dry, because it's not a moisturizing-based product. I've got a Cantu product at home because they actually market towards all the hair events, not this one, and they give away free products in your goodie bags. And... Um, I read the ingredients this morning, and it's, it contains snow white, petro um, snow white petroleum. Snow white petroleum, to make it sound pretty. It's just Vaseline, even if it's snow white. <laughs> so be careful how they're trying to finesse things and, and dress things up. It's, 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 it's all the same rubbish ingredients in the product, even if it's cheap. If things are too cheap, it's normally not very good for your hair or good for you. Your hair has to be invested in. Um, Sorry, we've got a question over here. Sure. 
My question is about the quality of your hair. So I've always been told that I've got different textures in my hair. So it's quite hard for me to find one product that actually works in my hair because I've got, my family's very eclectic. So I've been told I've got Asian hair, I've got this hair, that hair. So finding one product that actually works for, to, to nourish my hair, I find very, very difficult. So if you've got different textures that are fighting each other, what is the best products that you should be using? We all have multiple textures in our hair. Every single person in this room has multiple textures in their hair. Um, you just have to find the right product itself. For example, our products, for example, they work on loose, wavy hair right down to the kinkiest of hair. If you find a product that's formulated well, it's not too greasy, has the right amounts of emulsifiers, water, extracts, nourishing lipids, you wouldn't have that issue at all, I guarantee. If you use, for, if you use, for example, our quench cream, we have a product called quench anti-breakage cream or our natural hair butter, it doesn't matter how your hair is textured, it will just mo moisturize it. You might use a little bit less, but you just it, it give the same effect. So everyone in this room has multiple textures on their hair. Everybody. Sure. Thank you. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to ask what your opinion is on um, the really popular brand Shea Moisture, because they, they boast to be um, containing a lot of natural ingredients. Um, but as you said, there's a lot of um, products that appear to be quite natural. Yeah. and avoid harmful chemicals, but in actual fact, they're not. So just wonder what your opinion was on Shea, Shea Moisture. Shea Moisture, back in the day, I mean, they've been around for a while. Shea Moisture, back in the day, were meant to be a really good brand. I never used them personally in the old days, but I did try to use them more recently before they sold to Sundar, which is a massive, massive um, hedge fund corporation company. So they're now a white-owned brand. You see them in boots and things. They contain a lot of unnatural ingredients. So you're not going to get that deep moisture. I think they're Jamaican black castor oil range meant to be quite good. But overall, I don't really use Shea Moisture. I tried one product on my daughter's hair, and it made her hair really flaky and dry. I tried the curling souffle. I always like to try new things, and I wasn't really feeling it. But um, I think it's, it's not as natural as it used to be. Shea Moisture. Sure. Sorry, I wonder if you could say something about hair dye. I see a lot of sisters, can like hair's falling out from all the dyeing. It's really fashionable now. I just wondered if you had something to say about that. Yeah, hair dyes contain loads of um, unnatural and synthetic ingredients. You have to be really, really careful. I would say try to use henna instead, if you can do. Um, I know you don't get all the colours and things, but it's more natural. Or there's another hair brand, which is a really old school one, which is more natural as well. It's, it's called, um, it's, it's called, what's it called? It's in the orange box. Yeah, vegan. That one I recommend. Otherwise, stay away from hair dyes. And if you, do, if you do dye your hair, if you do dye your hair or lighten your hair, just step up the moisture, more deep conditioning, just really um, extra TLC with the hair is the main thing. Any kind of um, um, scientific change on the structure of your hair strands you do, whether it's relaxing, colouring, um, hair dyeing or whatever, it needs more moisture, more, more TLC on the hair in your hair routine basically. Castor oil is great. It's actually, it's actually not always really in a, wa a wax. So on its own, I find it to be a little bit heavy. We're using all of our scalp oils here as a base, amongst other oils. But um, it's a brilliant oil to use, but I, I find it, is better, it works better in a blend of things rather than on its own. I've got two minutes to go. No, Sorry, <laughs> the sister's got two minutes, and then she's going to be outside during the break. Yeah. So you're welcome to go and ask her any more questions you want. Thank you, family. So just quickly, just washing your hair. Anybody wash their hair once a week or once every two weeks? How, how often are you washing our hair? That's brilliant. That's fantastic. Because I know back in the day, it was more like once every four weeks, once every six weeks. I had ladies say once every eight weeks. But um, washing your hair is really important. I say treat your scalp as, like, treat your scalp as though you treat your face. If you, if you didn't wash your face once every four weeks, imagine the bacteria building up on there. Your scalp is basically an essential the skin on your face. So you treat it the same way. And it, and it, it, it then rewards you with a crop full of hair growth, harvest hair growth all the time. Um, anybody here who does the co-washing, washing with conditioner? Yeah. yeah. How do you find it? Yeah. Co-washing is good, but I say also use shampoo at least, at least once a month on the scalp mainly. Try and find a shampoo that's sulfate-free. Uh, we have a really good shampoo outside. It's, um, it took me a long time to formulate a good shampoo. That's about four years to formulate a really good shampoo. Wow. I tended to co-wash before. But um, you should use a sulfate-free shampoo that's natural. That's going to help you to clear all the bacteria around the follicles and allow your hair to grow and scalp to breathe. Um, yeah, that was it, basically. I think we've got a round. One more question. I can tell you outside. That's going to take a minute. So I'll be outside, moment. definitely. Actually, yeah, it's fine, yeah. All right, family. Yeah. Sal has agreed. So right now is the break. Right now is the break, and we're going to resume with the schedule at quarter two. So in half an hour. So there's time to patronize the stores, go and get some food. But 
Sal has Question agreed back. to stay in here for the next 10 minutes so you can continue to ask questions during the break. But for everyone that's going to go now, if we can just give Sal a round of applause. Thank you so much. As we continue in the science of black hair, I have the pleasure of sitting next to the wonderful Sows from Root to Tip, my family, Root to Tip, delivered a fantastic presentation today at today's event. Just give our viewers a little taste of what you were talking about today. I was speaking about EDCs and the things you should be looking out for in uh, your your products, your brand, the things are the corporate products on the market. So just, just define ECDs for this. So EDCs, endocrine disruptor chemicals, yes. the kind of synthetic ingredients that large corporate brands like ORS and your Cantus and mm -hmm. and your Hasper Center brands put into the products and mass produce and market to us mm -hmm. on the market and giving us women fibroids and cancer and giving men infertility issues. So I spoke a little bit about that. I also spoke about how to just the general basis of how to maintain healthy hair. Well, you know, I, I think one of, the, one of the unique things about your presentation today, I think that you have caused like half the audience to go home and dash away, whatever they, was, they have here, yeah, you know what I'm saying, in their cabinet for their hair. You know, so, I mean, I, I spoke to a few people today and they were saying, you know, like the, the Cantu, they might have dash with the Cantu, everybody, everybody had the Cantu. Uh, I get emails weekly from customers saying, you know, I used to use Cantu, my hair's dry, and on the, on the, on the, on the, on the second line of ingredients is mineral oil, mm. something you put in your car, it's a byproduct of petroleum, so I wouldn't use that. So it's about being real. It's about people stepping up and understanding that people like Root to Tip brands make products that actually have an effect on the health of your hair. Yes. We care about your hair. We're not just mass producing rubbish because it's cheap to get into the, into the black hair market and make millions. Definitely, definitely. You know what I mean? Now, one of the things that um, you did touch on today um, is the... The, the, the idea of pain, yes, as associated with doing our hair. And many of us have gone through this. And we, mo most, the, the, most of the, the people that say this, talk about this, are women. But a lot of men go through this as well in terms of like the cane roll. Because a lot of us had cane roll, you know what I'm saying, as, as young men um, and, and locks and them kind of things there. Um, just break it down a little bit more for us in terms of what the, the psychology of associating pain with doing our hair. I think it boils down to being having that notion of having hair unkempt. Mm -hmm. You know, having that ungroomed look, you know. So we, you know, in slavery days, you weren't allowed to have your hair on show. So if your hair was on show, it'd be, it'd be a punishment even. So I had to be braided up tightly. And, and I think in the black community, we kind of have pushed that forward into our own community. So if you have a child, for example, their hair has to be cane road and neat and cane road every single week. And the child has to get used to that pain. Or you get a conk in the head with a comb. If you move, try and touch it. <laughs> Same with boys. So I think um, associating pain with beauty is something, something we've now, be, we now become accustomed to. Yes. But I think we need to break down that, that black hair myth and try and associate it with, I say, soft scalp styles for children especially, right. yes, yes. to allow their hair to grow freely, um, to allow it to develop into its true beauty potential, mm -hmm. as opposed to keeping it rigid and straight in lines of yes. corn cornrows. Yeah. Well, one of the things that you, that you mentioned in terms of that, that you know, that, that soft scalp uh, kind of care was the importance of the big comb, yeah? And a lot of us, we don't have the big comb, you know? Like, the biggest comb in, our, in, 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 in a lot of our homes is the Afro comb, and some of them are not even very big in terms of the teeth in the comb, yeah? Um, well, you also mentioned fingers, yes? yes? What's the benefit of fingers and big combs over the combs that most of us are using? Well, if you try and run a fine tooth comb with a metal pick at the end, you all have those as fine tooth combs you part the hair with. Try and run it through your hair and it, you get that friction, that fight, it's conflict. Yes, yes. Our hair is made in a coily fashion, it grows from the scalp in a coily fashion. Yes. So you have to try and use hair tools that actually um, are, are, are made for our hair texture as opposed to fighting all the time. Everything doesn't have to be a fight for black people. Yes. You know, everything doesn't have to be a struggle. Our hair, our hair should be our okay. Should be. It shouldn't be a struggle, especially for kids. <laughs> and in game, we start from young, we teach them that our hair, sh everything should be painful. Yes. So I say start with your hands first, detangle it, changes your hair game. First of all, you're not gonna lose any strands in the process and you're gonna feel where the knots and tangles are and you're gonna learn to love and what the, the real hair texture should feel like as opposed to trying to rip and shred it out with a comb. All right, well, kings and queens, roots to tip, yeah? Root to Tip, they actually make cosmetics here. Yeah? So if you're looking for some help and assistance on this thing, they make yeah some of these things that you can be using on your, on your hair. Just give our viewers an idea of the thing, the products that you make, some of the ingredients that go into them, and where they can find you. You can find us on social media at root r o o t number two tip, and we specialise not in just making products, but hair education. That's our first thing. And when I first came into the market, I realised that black women and black people in general 
didn't have much understanding about their hair. So we don't just do products, but the products that we do do are amazing for your hair. So everything I produce, I made myself in my kitchen. And so I know exactly what's in there. You have things like essential oils, aloe vera, avocado butter, um, aloe vera, um, um, sorry, aloe vera protein extracts, plant extracts, water, glycerin, things that agree with our hair texture and type, as opposed to just being chemical things that are made cheaply and widely spread. So I think just, if, you, if you're looking for something, for example, to stop your hair breakage, we have a quenched cream for that. We have things that actually, we have a solution to every hair problem you probably have. Right. Powerful, you've heard it here, Kings and Queens. This is Sows from Root to Tip Cosmetics. And you must, yeah, we must support, yeah, these entrepreneurs because they're not only entrepreneurs, you know, they're scientists, yeah, they're making you know what goes into the thing, yeah, you know what I'm saying, and how you can, you know, what I mean, be the best carers of your own hair, yeah. This is what we're dealing with here, yeah, at the Science of Black Hair. It's got Kush TV, and you ain't got nothing if you ain't got Kush. <laughs>